Hi, welcome to Darkwood Bushcraft. Um, today we're going to look at spoon carving with an SE6. So we'll see how we get on. Okay, so today we're going to look at carving with an SE6, carving a spoon, um, and see how it will perform with slightly finer carving tasks. Um, so I've got myself a piece of green split hazel, which we're going to use for the task today. Um, and I'm just going to talk you through the steps and we'll just see how we get along. I've never actually carved a spoon with an SE6. So again, um, much like my SE5 tri-stick video, this is going to be a first. So I don't know how it's going to work. So to start with, I start off with a stick about a foot long. And that's because I'm going to start further back from the end because I want something to hold on to when I'm shaping the handle in this part here. So we're going to start for, um, from the handle, work our way up and let's see how we get on. So I'm just going to decide where the bowl is going to go initially and I'm just going to take off enough wood to start shaping the handle here. So as you can see it makes fairly short work of that. And I'm just going to flatten it off just to make sure my spoon isn't twisted. This is where the bowl is going to be so I want everything nice and flat now. One of the advantages of a big knife is you can choke up on it like this and kind of use it a little bit like a one-handed draw knife. Here I'm just using it as a bit like a plane. I'm bracing against my chest and I'm using it in a controlled way. Now I, I can quite comfortably cut towards me because of the angle of my wrist so there's no way that the knife can actually do me any damage. So I'm just going to continue to work towards myself, just shaping the handle as I go. Now remember when you're carving something like this, always try and cut across the grain. So as soon as I've started to scoop out this way and it starts to come up again, I'm going with the grain. So that's potentially where I'm going to split the wood off. So as soon as I start to work on the top of the handle I come from the top and I work my way back towards the bowl of the spoon up until up until the point where it starts to flare out the other way again that's important that will give you control over your cut so you're only taking the wood off that you want to take off you're not actually creating any splits and runs that's one of the biggest secrets of wood carving it's not that big a secret but once you know it, it makes sense. So I'm not worried about all these little feathers that I'm creating. If I try to pull them off at this point, I'm going to create lots of splits that are going to run and flare off. So I'm going to remove them by going the other way, cutting across the grain. As you see, the push cut here with the tip of the knife is reasonably fine. So although it's a big knife to handle, there's a lot of very easy control there. Now, once I've got a rough shape like this, I can then start to refine the shape a little bit. So I'm just going to thin this off here. I'm not going to worry about the bowl at the moment. I'm just going to create the handle to start with. That's why I cut off this extra because it gives me plenty to hold on to and plenty of control over the wood and the piece that I'm working on. So I'm just thinning the neck of the knife. Again, if it doesn't come off straight away, I'm not worried because I don't want to create splits in the handle. So I'll turn it around and I'll just trim those feathers off running down this way and then do the finer refinements with the tip of the knife.
Okay, right, so I am now going to decide roughly where I want the bowl to be. So that's going to be about there-ish. One of the mistakes a lot of people make when they're carving spoons is they make the bowl too long, and then you end up with something that looks like a canoe. So once I've established where I want the bowl to be, I'm just going to remove as much material as I can. edges down and start to refine the bowl shape now. So before I start shaping it I'm going to thin it out. If you look at any kind of spoon that you've got in your kitchen drawer you'll find the second mistake that most people make which is to make their spoon too deep. So I'm going to take off quite a lot of material here. Started to thin it out already. So, once I've started to thin it out in the middle, I can start to work those towards the edges so it becomes rounded in profile. Start to bring the wood in towards the neck of the spoon. Now when it comes to spoons there's um, there's no such thing as a good spoon or a bad spoon. As long as your spoon can shovel food in your face anything else then is just elaborate decoration so don't worry about how pretty your spoon ends up just as long as you can get it in your mouth and it'll scoop up food so all I'm doing now is I'm just refining the shape a little bit with my push cuts because that gives me the most control Sure the top of my spoon before I start to scoop out the bowl is actually flat. So the shape I'm refining at the moment is the actual shape of the bowl itself. So that's just I'm not worried about the thickness, you can see it's way too thick on the end there, but we're just working on this shape currently. So I'm trying to get it more or less symmetrical. top at the moment to be completely flat so I've got to bring that top back to right to where I cut it so 
the tip of your knife is the best bit to do the finer carving with. And your push cut will give you the best control to take small amounts of material off. Keep your knife moving constantly so as I'm moving this way I'm also pulling across to some degree it keeps the knife slicing it will draw cut much more effectively than it will push cut so I try and move the knife in both directions at once okay right so this end bit is a little bit dubious, so I'm just going to work in that direction now and just take off a bit more material at the top here. shaped so now just doing a little bit of refining now once I've got the shape more or less there the last stage before we get the hook knife out and cut the bowl is just to again across the grain but just use the blade and we're just going to scrape back some of these cuts and just smooth everything off a little bit again we have to go across the grain if you try and go up so I'm going from the middle of the spoon down towards the front rather than trying to do it from here if I do that I'm going to start to pull up fibres and actually make it rougher rather than smoother. So to do the back of the bowl, I'm going to come from here. And again, I don't want to go past this part of the of the wood because again, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to fluff up those fibres. all sorts of problems. Right, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to round this end off. roughly just by removing as much material as I can and then start to refine the shape with the push cuts. Just start to even everything out a little bit. Fancy, it's just got to do the job.
Right, so I'll get my hook knife, we'll finish off the spoon, and uh, then we'll see where we're at. So, this is the spoon blank that we've made with the SE6. So, literally now we're just going to create the bowl in the spoon with a hook knife. A good hook knife is obviously worth its weight in gold. This one was um, hand forged by a friend of mine, Dave Budd, who is a very well known blacksmith, knife maker, tool maker from the West Country. Makes exceptional tools. I've had this hook knife probably nigh on 20 years now and it's never let me down and it's still my favorite. So a well-maintained tool and a bit of practice. Make short work of these sorts of things. So there's lots of different ways you can finish a spoon once you've carved it. You can keep it like this, especially if it's just going to be used to eat your lunch. What I like to do with mine is, once they've dried out, is I like to um, scorch them and then oil them with a bit of raw linseed oil. Don't use boiled linseed oil because it's actually toxic, but raw linseed oil is absolutely fine and completely food safe. Um, so there you go, there's your finished spoon carved predominantly with the SE6. So it just goes to show that even with a big knife, it's still capable of fairly fine work. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.